I haven't listened to so many. I get a lot of my, you know, uh, uh, work ethic or how to conduct myself or how to go about or how to approach what I do in terms of DJ. I get a lot of my kind of um, information from stand up comedians, right? I think they're in a similar sort of realm, in realm industry. I don't know what they call it. Like the format is similar, right? It's one person on the stage doing something. Um, maybe the the kind of no the format isn't maybe the overall aspect of how they deal with the industry is similar right um how to kind of get well known in the comedy comedy circles probably as long if not longer than the djing circles right you basically have to work your way up from open mics to shitty booking somewhere to eventually maybe get a booking agent or manager to then take you on to other shows and you just have to work your way up and they always say i think there's a 10 year mark where you start to get good right before 10 years you're just absolute dog shit so um 10 years when you start to kind of get your wheels up you know you try to take take your training wheels off and start to kind of cycle on your own and i think the djing world is kind of the same because both and both kind of fields have a very low bar of entry right you don't need to do much to be a dj right you just have to have an interest in music and then kind of pursue that over a period of time hone your craft develop a sound um obviously you have some sort of technical ability um obviously maybe arrive at a certain time you know maybe have a certain sort of perspective that no one else has blah 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 eventually you get to a stage where you want to get to can we do the same sort of realm so i kind of take my lot of inspiration from them and um they always say in their kind of comedic circles whether it's a joe rogan crew or some of the new york cats for um Luis j gomez or those dudes they always really emphasize the idea of always getting up right getting up getting up getting up and that means kind of like always going on stage always going to an open mic performing every day like uh, in the la circuit they try to no i think new york is more so they bounce around from club to open mic to open mic like every night of the week right just hustling just kind of getting your sets and reps in uh because that's the only way you're going to get better at you know doing the thing you're doing doing it more often so the message i remember hearing when i was running and i started to do all the kind of you know wacky sort of like um cheat not cheat running but you know the kind of stuff that you don't have to really run like oh just do this and you don't have to do three mile run and then it, you know eventually got it got back around to the whole idea of like no if you want to get better running you just have to run there's no but there's no hack to running if you want to run a marathon you have to run a marathon right there is another way to go do you got to train like you're running a marathon so but the difficulty with djing i found is that there isn't an abundance of places to go and play right well if you're an open mic or you're a comedian if effectively if you've got a microphone in your hand you can tell jokes anywhere literally anywhere right it doesn't really matter even without a microphone but with djing especially in london and with the maybe with the you know with the licensing laws of some boroughs not all bars are equipped to host djs or to accommodate djs in that regard right some of them if they're if they are available they only have i don't know vinyl and if they don't have vinyl they don't have a pa if they don't have a pa they don't have this like there's always little things missing so you have to kind of always set yourself up with a rig which is why the whole mobile dj thing is really big in the uk for the most part you see a lot of those kind of guys that have those massive rigs those really cheesy corny lights that look horrible you know what i'm talking about right like it's those kind of like wedding dj sort of sort of vibes right it's an industry in itself but it's not something that i kind of want to be interested in at all in the slightest let me see if i can find it mobile dj I bet you're going to see something super nice. It's like, the, you know, the kind of dude that has the microphone in his hand and saying, come on, guys, let's go. All that sort of nonsense, right? So if you're if you're watching via YouTube, you'll see it now, right? This is a mobile DJ, right? It's sort of like this massive translucent box in the front you know, with colors on it, loads of flashlights on top of it. It's just really like, you know, the quintessential school disco sort of DJ, right? And that's kind of what we do in the UK for the most part because we don't really have a lot of places that are set up to kind of host DJ. So if you want to go and play more places, you have to get your own rig. Now, this is something I've kind of had in my mind um, for myself, uh, less so in that kind of shitty vein, but more so in a kind of David Mancuso uh, loft party. Do you remember that kind of vibe, right? Let's, um, the loft New York City, right? I have a kind of that sort of vibe where he used to kind of, um, if you're familiar with him, David Mancuso came up, I think around the 60s, 70s, right? He was kind of um, one of the pioneers behind, you know, uh, throwing disco parties in abandoned places or in, in weird places around New York. Uh, and then he kind of built out this place called The Loft. That was seminal uh, location. I think they featured it in The Deuce as well. If you watch The Deuce um, TV series by James Franco, that kind of talks about the uh, prostitution industry and gentrification of New York. Uh, throughout the 60s 70s and 80s i think if you check that show out they featured the um the loft in there but basically david mancuso's whole thing was he essentially brought his own bespoke entertainment audio visual audio kind of system there right you had one deck i think basically one deck like the best pa uh the best um 
the best speakers, just everything really fine tuned to kind of really uh, bring uh, back the appreciation of just listening to great music on a great system. Nowadays, it's kind of divulged, it's kind of gone a bit awry, right? We're kind of more in awe of superstar DJs, but there is been a, there there is a still a, that kind of a, there is still that kind of vibe around with people like you know um, what are they called is it unknown? Uh, what are they called? Fuck. There's a few people that do parties. Right, I don't know. Body Hammer are a good example of it. They kind of have a bespoke system they kind of put out. But in general, anyway, great, great, great idea. And it's something I've kind of um, floated around with in my head, right? David Marcus, that's the, the absolute legend of kind of getting my own uh, rig. So two big actual speakers, a monitor, a great mixer, um, or not even a great mixer, maybe just like a one of those really good um, DG, DD, DDJ SBs from Pioneer, they're kind of all in one units. They've got a really, really good one now that I use when I went to go play an art gallery once. Uh, this girl hired out for me, that was really good quality. It's amazing. It kind of basically is a good way of getting up two CDJs, one Mark, Pioneer, Mark, Pioneer uh, MK1000, whatever they are, in your house without having to shell out you know two grand on each kind of deck. You can kind of just get it all in one unit. But I was really, really thinking about the idea of kind of setting up my own kind of sound system. I think, let me see if I can get a sound system here. There should be a, a kind of image of it. Sound system from the loft. So, yeah. So, this is kind of essentially what it sort of looked like, right? I think people have kind of copied it a little bit. But um, you really wanted the sound to be amazing uh, in a place that you play. But anyway, uh, long story short, it's hard to kind of get gigs, you know, playing out in London. So I'm really thankful for, you know, the opportunity I've been given by the guys that own all the star, the all star franchise around London. So big up those guys for kind of bringing me in. And yeah, so this Friday, I'm going to be playing at the Star of Bethnal. It's going to be an interesting one because I think this is the kind of, that, that's their marquee one, I think, from all the, the stars that they have. I'm pretty sure that's, that's the one that they really kind of like, you know, no, this is, this is the spot because, um, I've been told, I've been given a kind of, you know, a, a set list of, not sets, I've been told what kind of music I should be playing there, which I never get told beforehand. So I'm sure they're kind of aware of like, you know, the kind of clientele that comes in there. I've been told to play from 10 to 2 a.m., which is different than what I do usually. So it's a very, very different vibe than what I'm kind of accustomed to. So it should be interesting to see how that kind of goes. But again, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good time. Um, by and large, I've really found the idea of playing out a lot really good. Uh, I really kind of found it a really great experience, but it's very difficult cool to kind of get any consistency when the equipment varies so so fucking drastically right so i guess for the most part i always get to play on pioneer cdj's 1000 and up right so i get to have a usb stick plugged into it right that's a good thing but whether i have a link cable is completely uh dependent on where i am whether or not the mixer is a mixer i'm used to playing on is completely dependent on where i am it's all really wet varies so it's very hard to kind of so you really have to i'm really thankful that i spend a lot of time going through my set list and going through what I want to play. Like I kind of have a feeling, I think when you're, I think when you get to the higher echelons of a DJ, you tend to kind of go off of the vibe, but I tend to have a bit of a structure where I have, I have like 35 or 50 songs that I want to play for an intro. I'm not going to play all of them, but the general sort of vibe and then the same for the middle and the same for the end, right? I've got same for the peak, same for the close. Um, and I usually kind of like steer my set around that kind of block, but it's hard to kind of, um, I would hate to think what would happen if I didn't have that at all, if I had just like nothing, if I just went into it completely like naked and I went just to test how I am when I went in there, I would hate it. I would hate it. So I'm really thankful that I kind of get to kind of do those things beforehand. But um, it kind of makes my sets a lot more easier to kind of uh, have a bit of flow, have a bit of order because when you get in there and you just have no idea what the mix is going to be like the other day at the Heathcote Star, I played on a Vestac mixer, which is the first time I've ever touched one in my life, right? I've never touched a Vestac mixer in my life, ever. I've always kind of seen Alan Heath's uh, Pioneers and stuff, maybe a Numart mixer from here time to time, but I've never seen a Vestac in my life. So to kind of finally just stand there in front of a Vestac, like, okay, cool, FX and there's different buttons on different, you have, to, you have to split the FX from different sides and the EQ uh, button has to be pressed in order to kind of get the high, mid lows and sides off and it's got two mid, it's got two lows, one mid, it's just, whole completely different vibe but yeah um again i think that's the benefit of having sets and reps and doing a lot of gigs over time you tend to kind of you know just tend to get a bit of autopilot when you play it doesn't seem to be that much of a big thing uh so this is the fly that i made for labertese i think i've got it here on the screen for you guys to check out so that's me on the friday at the start of Bethnal. so if you're around the area and you want to see the old guy play here it is man here it is 
the star of Bethnal with your kid, Agostino, play, play, the handsome black man at the, at the star of Bethnal. So check that out from the 6th, that's Friday 16th of August, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Should be a bit of a banger. Check me out if you're out and about in that area.